This is the last in a series of videos about ancient Greek that I'll be making, and in this one I'm going to show you a little bit of the language itself. Um, I'll start off with a discussion about the alphabet, and then we will jump into the text below. And it is taken from Herodotus' Histories, Book 1, um, Chapter 68. Okay, over here are the first few of the letters of the Greek alphabet. And as you can see, they have upper and lower case for each letter, just like our alphabet. And a lot of these letters are going to look very, very familiar to us, as the Romans, via the Etruscans, borrowed and modified the Greek alphabet and made it their own. Um, so you're going to see stuff like, this looks like our letter A, this looks like our letter B, the lower case doesn't quite look it, but you know, close enough. But we will have a few that look rather a bit different, and some are going to look very similar, like Ada over here, but they're going to sound very differently. So in English we would expect that to go like house, but in Greek it's a vowel. It's a long E. Um, these also may look familiar to you if you've hung around a college campus with fraternities and sororities, as these are the letters that they used to make sororities. So when they were saying Delta, 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 can I help you, help you, help you on Saturday Night Live, here's the letter Delta. Greek also has a fleet of diacritical marks. This first pair is breathing. This is rough breathing, and it makes a an H sort of sound, and this is smooth breathing, which makes no sort of sound. These are accents, and they indicated when they were first written down, where the pitch accent went on a word. Except, of course, by that time there really wasn't much of a pitch accent, so they were writing down something that was being lost and trying to preserve it. So we're stuck with all of these, and they do some strange things that aren't always expected. This is the Yoda subscript, and it's got a strange development. Once it was pronounced, and the pronunciation became weaker and weaker, and they started writing it underneath, and then finally not pronounced at all. Um, so that's a tour of the alphabet. This is, these are not all of the letters. There are, of course, more. Um, so let's jump straight to it. Okay. Tuton on ton andron, likes, aneore en tegei, kai, Sun tuchei, tuchie, kreisamenos, kai sotie. Euseis gar tuton ton chronon, epimixies pros tus tegeetas, elton eis halikeon, yeah, halikeon, yeah, halikeon, eitheieto siderun. Excellaunomenon, kai en tomati, en oreon to poeomenon. Okay, as you can see, Greek, like Latin, is fond of very long sentences, but originally there wouldn't have been any punctuation, so you would have had to just feel through by knowing the language pretty well. So up to this number two, there are two sentences, and they're both pretty long. Okay, so the first part, um, Tuton on ton andron. Um, this is all genitive plural. Well, this isn't. It's a particle that means then, and Greek just abounds with particles. And some of them are easy to translate, like this one. And some aren't so easy to translate. Uh, in a way, they're kind of like road map. They're road signs to a bit of text. So. Tuton on ton andron. This on tells us that tuton kicks it off. So tuton ton andron. Uh, this, then the men. Um, Greek has a word that means the, and they use it in a slightly different way than we use it in English, but not completely foreign. So, for an English speaker, you'll when you see what they call the article, you'll say, "Oh, I know what that's about." So tuton ton andron. These the men. So of these men, likes. Um, Likes was one of the Spartans, and they were looking for something to help defeat the Tegeans. Um, and this is part of that story. Uh, Anure, he found. 
Antegea, Kai, Sun Tukei, um, by chance, Kresamenos, um, having consulted an oracle, Kai Sophie, and by his cleverness, this is Sophie, um, this is where we get the Sophian philosophy, um, and it means cleverness, I would say here. It can mean wisdom, but I kind of like cleverness. Okay. Euseis gar, here's another particle in Greek, like I said, just flooded with, and this means something like for, but something like, I'll say, Euseis gar, tuton ton chronon, epimixies pros tus tegea, tegeetas. Okay, this whole bit up here is something called a genitive absolute phrase, and the genitive absolute just by itself is euseis epimixies. Um, and those are the two parts of the genitive absolute. The rest are little things modifying. So, being for tuton ton chronon, um, this, the time, uh, this is the accusative of duration of time, so at this time. Uh, epimixies, um, peaceful relations, pros, towards, tus, the tegeetas. So, <clears throat> elthon, coming, going. Um, this is a participle, and like Latin, Greek is very participle heavy compared to English. Um, es Calcion, and I'm sorry for my pronunciation, some of these words are long and I'm a little out of practice. Um, calcion, uh, into a blacksmithery, into a blacksmith shop. Etheeto, he saw, sideron, metal, ex launomenon, being worked. Kai enthomati. Uh, in in wonder, aim, he was. Oreon. Um, for those of you who have studied Attic Greek, uh, this is different from what you might expect. Um, this is Ionic Greek and is a slightly different dialect. Um, Herodotus wrote in Ionic Greek, and some things are a little bit different. This is different from what you know. This is different from what you know. Oreon seen to poio. Poieomenon, um, the things being done, the deeds. He saw what was going on. So, um, of these men, um, Lycase found, um, it doesn't say what, but he found it in Tegea, uh, both by chance, having consulted an oracle, and by cleverness. Um, there being, at this time, um, peaceful relations towards the Tegeans from the Spartans, who, as we know, were not very peaceful. Um, he went into a blacksmith shop and saw metal being worked, and he was in wonder as he looked on, on this being done. Um, maton de min ho calceus apothomazonta epe pausamenos tu ergu. Um, maton, um, this means learning, but here it might mean noticing. Noticing, de, and this de is another particle, and it is really tricky to translate, but what it's telling us is that there's a new subject. It's not the case again. So we've got maton, de, new subject, mean. Noticing him, ho, Kakeus, um, this is the blacksmith, and ho, there's the, the blacksmith. And this is nominative case. Um, apothomazonta, apothomazonta um, this is talking about who he saw, mean, and that's referring to the case. Um, looking on, epe said, Pausamenos, pausing to ergu, of his work. Um, again, here's the article. So, the blacksmith then, noticing noticing him looking on, said, stopping his work, 